what do we know so far and what do we not know so far about either, I don't want to call it a new mutation because looking at the South African data, it could actually be multiple new mutations, could it not? That's right, Brian. And, and I think it's also good to sort of step back and say that viruses mutate all the time. In fact, every time they transition from one host to another, one person to another, particularly in large outbreaks, that uncontrolled transmission is what gives the virus the ability to, to mutate. The, the issue is in most cases, those mutations are non-consequential. They don't really have any effect. The concern with the UK variant in particular is that UK has noticed that the mutations that they have, they see in the genetics of that virus could it correlates with what they're seeing epidemiologically, where they're seeing an uh, increase in the number of cases. But then again, it could just be people letting their guard down. And they're seeing that that's becoming the predominant strain that they're diagnosing in new people. And put those things together, the concern is that this might be a strain that's a lot more transmissible, which of course has public health implications. Um, it doesn't tell you anything about the lethality. And from what we know currently, uh, there's there's not really a lot of concern that this is going to make the vaccines uh, less effective that are currently on the market. Of course, it's okay. going to require a bit more you know, information, but that's not a concern at this point. Yeah, because, and that's and that's such an important point, doctor, because, you know, you hear about this new strain. The UK goes on hard lockdown. Everybody tries to flee London. There's sort of that 24 hour moment of panic. Then we talked to virologists. They've come on and said, hey, we believe the vaccines as they exist now should work on these new strains. It sounds like you are also confident that is likely the case, doctor. Yeah, and the reason why is, you know, some of my colleagues have used this metaphor that you know, this, what this vaccine kind of does is it sends an email with a photo of the virus telling your immune system to remember, remember the culprit, right? And now if you change small one or two details about the photo, it won't make a difference in your body's ability to recognize the virus. It's really over time the culmination of multiple mutations uh, that could lead to that. But but again, the, most of the vaccine manufacturers as well as the, the NIH are looking uh, to make sure that that indeed is true. But the point that you raised, though, Brian, about the, 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 the facilities and the capacity to do these kind of in-depth genetic analysis, what we call phylogenetic analysis, is really important because, you know, the vaccines right now are a drop in the bucket. Eventually, they're going to help us control that transmission. But one way we can drive the number of cases down is all those blunt instruments we talk about, the, you know, the masking, the distancing, because it doesn't matter what mm -hmm. the strain is. Those actions help us keep the cases down. But the genetic analysis over time will give us the ability to detect mutations that could affect your ability to pick up the, t the, the virus on, on tests because all of our, you know, diagnostic, many of our diagnostic tests are based on the viral genetics. It'll help us figure out the efficacy of the virus, um, the efficacy of the vaccine, as well as medications against the virus. Well, there is one tiny sliver of upside, something that I posted last night, and I asked a genuine question about the flu season because we don't have one. There is, I don't want to say there's zero flu season in the United States, but doctor, as you know, it's not far off of zero. Obviously, we don't want to go around in masks for the rest of our lives, but we are learning, I think, valuable basic mitigation techniques because let's not forget the flu can kill 40 to 80,000 Americans every single year. What are we learning in this process we don't like, but it could be valuable for just the common cold in years to come? Yeah, Brian, this is such an interesting point because it's not just the flu, even things like the common cold or, you know, viral other coronavirus viruses, seasonal coronaviruses, they don't kill. But, you know, the economic productivity goes down. People get sick. They have to stay home. Right. Some of the, the basic lessons are first and foremost, I hope we never go back to, you know, the past where we went home, went to work while sick because we've learned the lesson of, you know, how easy it is to transmit those respiratory viruses. The other is, you know, using those masks, particularly if you're sick. Um, and then last is the importance of ventilation. You know, some of the investments that you see both private businesses make, but also what you've seen from the CDC in terms of guidance with ventilation. I hope that that's going to keep us safe from all the seasonal threats, as well as any new emerging threats that might come from new respiratory viruses. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.